Yes, it's really a privilege to sit down with you for the fuse and have a little chat. That was I've one heard of the best the shows. Oh I've yeah. Heard, yeah, I've heard of the fuse, um, but is it the fuse that I've heard of, or is it just local? It's local. Okay. It's local. It's local. So, but you know, we're trying to do a lot of coverage for stuff that yeah, like matters. I, I wonder where I've heard that before. Now. Have you ever heard of anything like that? I don't know. I think we're the only fuse we know, but you do a lot more traveling than we do, so we don't. So you're local in Oneonta? We're local to Utica, New York, actually, Utica. which is, you know, we're south of here a little here. bit. Where's Utica from here? We're south, yes, Eric? North. We're north. We're north of here a little bit, <laughs> but just a bit. We're only like an hour and a half away or so, so we trekked out because it was worth it for sure. And that was one of the best shows I've ever seen in my life, so I want you to really know from our arts that we now, felt that. What I'm trying to do right now is yeah. I, I just transitioned, basically, I took a two-year break. Uh -huh. And uh, basically, um, I'm just getting back out again, and this summer I toured with the original band, and that was kind of the catalyst. Mm -hmm. uh, but that fell apart really quick. I mean, it was kind of like this. Um, my agenda was to get with them and utilize the same format that we had in, before, mm -hmm. um, but use my experience, and hopefully I was depending on them, and expecting them to use their experience uh, to make it better, mm -hmm. or to evolve. And what happened, man, was they didn't want to do that format. They wanted to chop it up and Photoshop the damn thing. So in the end of the day, Days of the New was taken completely out of my hands. I was like their pet, dragged along. There was no vibe, no organization. All my experience and everything that I've learned uh, had no validity at all. So basically, I had two options. Not do it at all and say, this is crazy and insane and salty to my craft and art and my investment and my spirit. Mm -hmm. Or be fucked up all the time. Right. And uh, that's basically what I did is I just kept getting through being fucked up all the time. And Right now, that's something I think that really needs to be cleared up because when you're an honest guy like me, you're the first guy who gets manipulated when you're dealing with bad people. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know how else to say it. Bad people I can manipulate and crucify, you know, the good people. It's, it's the same thing like Jesus. He spoke out. He didn't really say anything bad. He just said stuff that you know, uh, people who like to make the rules and want to hear what they want to hear didn't like. Yeah. So it's the same concept. You know. Um, so so you feel sort of misunderstood or not no, like no, jived not by in, them no, no, no. or it's far from feeling misunderstood. Oh okay. Okay. This is pure disrespect. Okay. They disrespected me. You know, if they they had the option. And basically, I'll just point on one person. You know, there's one guy there who, you know, ruined it all, and he ruined it. Now, after all this time, I realize he was the one who ruined the original project. But see, here's my thing: is I invest my life and energy into this music, yeah, um, and writing and the vibe and the art and creating that world. So. I can live in it, you know, that's what an artist yeah. does, is try to manifest a fantasy or their dream or their vision. And it's a big problem with it. It's, you know, one of them gets pulled by the other's energy. Another one gets uh, distracted by his laziness and his own ego. And then the other guy just hates me, disrespects me, and basically you say this to him. 
and my uncle said to him, he said, I think success is measured by how you end up in a place where you're content or happy and you love what you're doing and you're expressing yourself or doing what, you know. And this other guy from the band, I'm not saying names. Sure, that's okay. Uh, said, I don't agree with that. So his version of success is hit records, Grammy Awards, and so that's what I'm dealing with. Yeah. And all that can happen when you're true to what you're yeah. doing. But if you're going straight for it, it's like Tribe Called Quest said, the niggers in the front are the ones that fall. Sucking niggers, nigga, nigga. You know Tribe Called Quest? <laughs> yes, I do. It's the old nigga of the 90s. Of the 90s, so yeah. Whoever you are. <laughs> I love yeah. that song, yeah. Well, this yeah. is a real rap. That was yeah, real yeah, it was real, rap. yeah. It's real. You know, there's real everywhere. Um, that's not saying everybody is real. They may be really full of shit. Sometimes I'm really full of shit. Or you can put it this way. It's like this. The more you invest into a garden, the more you're going to get out of it. Yeah. The more you educate yourself about all the different elements of how to take care of it. It's the same thing with art and music. And honestly, I believe that art and music is one of the closest ways an individual can get to God and, and be... Um, Persuaded by that energy. Honestly, I've, I've been infatuated with God um, or a higher power, the, the consciousness energy um, that is the. Yeah, that on, is. On, yeah. It, it basically, uh, the ongoing consciousness that never dies, never sleeps. You know, uh, I think we're part of that. I think that's why when we dream. Who knows? We may, when we die, we may just be in a dream. And our consciousness may just be a part of that. Because who's to say, how do you even know that when you die, you don't just keep dreaming? You know what I'm saying? So anyways, everything I'm saying to you is the reason why I do what I do. Yeah. And it's my investment. And I'm investing into the people. I'm going to give them something. First off, I'm, you know, Number one, I gotta take care of myself. Absolutely. You know, it's the same concept. God, higher power. Uh, number one, and it's taken me a lot of different uh, endeavors and experiences and events to learn that. And each time I go through shit, I learn it in a different life. I realized that um, I have to invest. See, as the, here's the thing. The last show that I played with the original band here recently, mm -hmm. I told them before it went on, I said, this is going to be a holy show. I said, I'm praying, I'm putting my guru energy into it. And, um, What happens is going to be God's voice. And I believe that. And I put that in my thoughts and prayers. And that's what was manifested. And it was on fire. I was on fire. I mean, I was talking to the crowd about, you know, the internet, dating websites, and the whole dating scene that's going on right now, and bondage and lies, living two lives, that whole thing. It's manifesting. You know, a lot of people are creating their second selves on the internet. Yeah. And I'm guilty of it. That's how I met my wife. The guy in my back, fortunately, I ran into a person that needed me and I needed them, and we balanced each other out mm -hmm. before. You know, I did date a little bit on the internet, but dude, I just wore myself out. I'm not going to lie. You put your picture up, you know. I did. I wore myself out. Thankfully, I met her, and now I'm not, you know, into swinging or, uh, you know, all these sex orgy groups and stuff. I got to experience this stuff at a young age, but dude, this shit is really fucking blowing up right now, man. And you don't even know about it, you know. Um, that's what's scaring me. I feel like uh, some of my responsibility is to connect with people 
and connects with that darker stuff mm -hmm. that seems to be shocking to the public or you know uncomfortable for people to talk about from molestation to you know um, uh, inadequacy to uh, shame all that stuff you know I feel like it's my responsibility to communicate with people about that sing about it. And, and why do you think that because is? Because we got Lady Gaga, Katy Perry, all these people who are exposing themselves in the whole hip-hop scene, which, you know, yes, they're giving women a lot of attention, but I believe that it's the girly, blue-eyed, no one knows what it's like to be the sad man job to really feel that pain and write true love songs yeah. or like Guns N' Roses right from the other side like actual yeah. Rose. dude the 80s that's what that was about it was about the white man giving everything he had to being the total sellout and a bitch he was you know but it was our responsibility and women you know had, there needs to be a balance I feel like that Every race has a job, like in religion and music and all that stuff. And my job is the worst job. I hate it. Why is that? Ah, because you know I'm a shy kid. Yeah, you're very sensitive. You know, who, who, you know, am have, I do have a feminine thing about me, and, um, but I love. I tell you what, I love. Here's my secret. I love women. Sure. Love them all. I see beauty in all of them, um, but my worst enemy is the, you know, the cocky, um, stuck-up, snobby, uh, hot chick that's fucking all prissy. Dude, I will argue, and they will bring out something to me. I feel like they're like a, the worst vampire throck you look when they're around, dude. They will get me going, dude. I've always had a problem with it through my whole career. But I've just sensed this energy. Now I own my own shit. But mm -hmm. Anyways, all I'm talking about is recognizing these energies in the world. Yeah. And a lot of the reason why we make video games and movies and these metaphors that are kind of fantastical is because we do know that some that there is uh, you know, multiverses. Mm -hmm. And basically all I'm saying is that I recognize I have my own perspective. The tree is like my responsibility. It's to me that tree is the tree of knowledge and the responsibility of man, his sin, his wrong, and having that option of being able to go against the grain. And for me, it was natural to go against the grain. But just like it's shocking to, you know, it's like, ooh, I want to do wrong because, you know what I mean? Uh, it excites me. Well, when I got sober in 2005, I discovered something that was really cool. I wanted to do right because it was, yeah. because I was so used to it. Because that also excited you. I, was, yeah. I grew up that way. Yeah. I was a heathen, man. I was a special ed. You know, I was always shocking people. So from a young age, Boy school, special ed, special schooling, always getting that negative attention, being exposed to sex at a young age, you know. Um, having a kid at 14, dude, I experienced fly, fight or flight, that feeling, that burning sensation in your head at, you know, 12, 13, 14. I dated a girl that messed around on me all the time and slept around on me all the time. And she would lock the door and have these parties and showing her booze and stuff, and these guys would be in there, yeah. And I'd be beating on the door, no, no. Like, you know what I'm talking about? Like, please, no. Like, something like drastic and evil is happening. You're like, feel like you're so betrayed. You know what I mean? Uh, anyways, that energy is intense and real and what drives me. All that stuff, negative, positive, all of it. But everybody goes through this stuff. Absolutely. And it's all our responsibility to take these energies and to and these experiences 
and to make them into something beautiful. And that's what I try to do with my music. Right now I'm working on a single. I've promised people the Purple album. I know I let a lot of people down. Um, but I toured it for like six, seven years. Mm -hmm. It just never got a break. It was so deep. It was like Nightmare Before Christmas, the whole album. I am going to release it after I release this next record. This next record, I will tell you the style of it and the vibe of it. It's very acoustical. Um, the, the, the instruments I'm using, I'm not using a lot of multi-instruments. A few. Um, but I finally got the sound down. Um, it's a mixture of green and orange. Um, and if people are familiar with the purple and that vibe a little bit, mm -hmm. it's got a little bit of that vibe, but um, I'm not going to release the name of the, or the color. Um, but basically, the vibe of it, there's a little gospel on there. There's a lot of light. I'm singing more love songs, but they're mm -hmm. darker love songs. Mm -hmm. I got a song, I don't know if it's going on a record, but it's called Ode to the Whore. It's giving credit to the insecure women who are sexually expressive, or who want to be sexually expressive. Now, either or, because I think that a woman is not a woman unless they can express themselves, because the nature of a woman is action. Mm -hmm. The nature of a man is thought. It's different. That's why we're thinkers and women are, you know. To have a confident, beautiful woman is to have a woman who can just go, Boom. That's why, like, models are the greatest representation of women. But there's also that negative to it. You know what I mean? Anyways, um, what I do in my focus, man, uh, it's all based around. It's probably crazy to you. No, but no. But that's it. That is my art. That's why it's so full when it comes across because it's so full of all of these things. I'm working with Charlie Colling from Train, um, the drummer from the original Days of the New slash Tantric may be working with me. I don't know. I'm filling that out. Mm -hmm. uh, but right now I'm trying to finalize the band. It's going to be a four piece. We've been doing three pieces the past couple weeks, but it, it's going to be a four-piece. We should have an album out here, you know, no later than the summer, but it's going to be like an EP. It's going to be one instrumental one. Nice. I already know what I want. I already know what I already got, got the it. vision. Actually, yeah. it's already written. Everything's already written. Um, the instrumental's already recorded. Um, so, we'll see what happens, though, We're man. close, which is awesome, yeah. I'm trying to find the right family and people, man. It's like, there was a lot of rock and roll in mine. And when I went on, it was more, it was different. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. More of an earthier. Yes. Dude, the intensity, you could not measure my intensity with theirs. It's still intense. You see mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But there's a different. Yeah, it's different. So, if you got any questions, I'll answer them, but I tried to cover no, listen, I, I think that was awesome. You can edit all this shit. I really appreciate it. Like, how I get from A to B to C is to talk about it all. So yeah. It's all genuine. So do what you can. But, but that's what was so awesome about the night was how genuine it was. And I think we'd like to thank you for that. We'd like to thank you for sitting down. Well, please. I appreciate you listening to me run my mouth for fucking 20 minutes about all this shit. Absolutely. It gives me an opportunity to be myself. And, thank you yeah. for being yourself always. And oh, the best thanks, of luck to you. you know, thanks for listening, man. You know, Absolutely. You can't, you can't have you know a voice or without an ear. Yeah. You can't have an ear without a voice. For sure. So thanks again for sitting down with The Fuse. And uh, we'll see you guys at the next show.